It turns out it kind of was a fluke. Nunes practically beat Pena with a right hook, an outside trip, and a double leg takedown. She also didn't really gas out. She started to get tired in the fifth round, and this pretty much concludes. It proves to us Nunes was not the same in the first one. She was talking about it over and over again. She said she was injured going into it. She was sick, and we know she pulled out with a sickness not too long before that. And with her new gym that she trains at, everything got rehauled when it comes to strategy and all that stuff. Nunes gassed out in the second round of the first Pena fight, which is very uncharacteristic. We usually do not see Nunes start to gas out that early. And and then this one looked really good for five rounds. Another big difference was in the first fight, they were trading punches, yet Nunes could not hurt her. In this fight, they traded many times and Nunes would drop her. Completely different results while trading punches. And this fight was also very taxing. She almost got point in arm bar. So all the people talking about the Kimura attempt from the first fight, that did not matter whatsoever. It was an attempt that failed. She got a fully locked arm bar on her in this one and still fought the same way for the rest of the fight. So the whole discouragement thing that, you know, Nunes either got scared or too discouraged after a Kimura lock from the first fight, that just turned out to be a very silly thing to come up with. You don't become a champion of the world because you got scared from a failed Kimura attempt. And Amanda Nunes absolutely dominates Juliana Pena for the majority of the fight. There were some scares there. A lot of submission attempts from Pena whenever Nunes got it to the ground. Nunes seemed to want to coast, just keep position on top, land some good elbows in case she needed to, but didn't do anything too crazy to open herself up. But when someone is constantly attacking off of their back, things are going to get through. And Nunes constantly was just pulling out of things with her arms extended, which opened up armbar opportunities. But other than that, man, we had a 50-43 scorecard. I don't know if I agree with that, but definitely a dominant performance overall for Amanda Nunes. She got punched a couple times and stuff like that. And it says that Nunes has three knockdowns in the fight when she does not have three knockdowns in the fight. In fact, she has five knockdowns in the fight. I don't know how they didn't count the other two when they were clearly punches of Juliana Pena falling down afterward. So she actually has the unofficial record of the most knockdowns in a single fight. Spamming the same exact technique over and over again and Pena just could not get around it. And it was an extremely simple game plan from Nunes that proved to be super efficient. Just go southpaw for boxing exchanges because Pena starts everything off the orthodox jab. So because of the southpaw versus orthodox battle, the jab from each other is gonna be a lot harder to land. There's an obstacle in the way and that is both each other's lead. Nunes's lead hand is gonna be an obstacle for Pena's jab and this is also vice versa. But Nunes never intended to land the jab. Pena starts everything off of that jab. It is her best punch. It's the thing that gets her wins and even got her the win in their first fight. So the southpaw stance is naturally going to eliminate an open jab from Pena to land. That means it eliminates all of her startups for her attacks. But regardless, Pena kept throwing the jab and Nunes was always onto it. She was only able to fight in one approach. She didn't really know how to adjust. And all Nunes was trying to do was move away from Pena's assault, maybe sometimes sidestep to her right side to get away from a potential right hand from Pena. But most of the time she's slipping her head on the inside and landing the right hook over the shoulder or pulling away of Pena's overextended flailing punches and blast her in the face when her hands are down. This was happening over and over again, just simply countering Pena's blitz with a right hook. And you know what the crazy thing is? Pena fainted to draw out the first right hook in the whole fight and never took advantage of that read, ever. What you see from the highest caliber strikers like Piotr Jan, Corey Sanhagen, or Adesanya fainting to draw out shots and capitalize was not seen here at all, even though Pena had the read, or unless she accidentally drew it out and really didn't gauge it at all. It just showed you the discrepancy of the striking ability between the two. Pena is just not nearly as good of a striker. She flails her punches as you saw, quite sloppy motions compared to Nunez's sharper precise punching, even countering. Nunez is not always known to be a counter puncher, but she can do everything, man. Nunez has all the skills in her toolbox to be a complete fighter. She boxed for the most part, but also used her wrestling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu advantage to completely take control of how the fight was going to play out. But Nunez fell out of her game plan many times. You saw her trying to attack on the center line with a straight left, but a great tactic that Nunez had when she would sit on the center line was use her takedowns to her advantage. Maybe not punch with Pena because that's the only way she's getting hit. If I'm going to be on the center line or she catches me on the center line by blitzing forward, I'm going to go under for the takedown. And that worked beautifully. I mean, 
Not the most polished takedowns, not super technical takedowns. A lot of them are actually just overpowering. Juliana Pena forcing her over and tripping her out and throwing her and stuff. There seemed to be a major strength difference between the two. And Pena is really strong herself. But the thing we absolutely have to give Juliana Pena is the ability to take punishment. She is so tough and durable. That was her main commodity in the fight just to keep herself in the fight at all times. Where most fighters have a problem doing that against Nunes. Whether it be their chin not being as good like Ronda Rousey or Misha Tate. Or they just crumble under the power and pressure like Raquel Pennington. But Nunez is smart in a way where when she feels that she cannot knock her opponent out easily, she always goes to the takedown. You saw that against Jermaine Duranemi and Felicia Spencer for different reasons though. GDR showed to be more capable on the feet and start to tag Nunez and make her pay for many missed shots. And with a longer reach and striking prowess, Nunez started to feel the fight getting away from her when it came to the striking so she switched to the takedowns. With Felicia Spencer, it was very similar to this fight, except that Spencer never got knocked down. She was able to zombie her way through every single punch and then eventually the wrestling would come and the chin just doesn't matter at that point. Pena didn't necessarily have as good of a chin as Felicia Spencer, but she was much more dangerous off her back. So it ultimately made her a more dangerous fight for Amanda Nunes. So great performance by Amanda Nunes and good tough effort from Juliana Pena. She definitely surprised me a bit. She performed much better than I expected. But Nunes continues to show why she's seemingly the best fighter in the world. There is an argument that Valentina Shevchenko is the best fighter in the world because she should have won the rematch. And that's the only fight left. Who else is there for Nunes to fight? Eldana, another contender. She says she wants to go up to 145 again. Nunes can close the chapter of her career whenever she wants, but the perfect end to the story, if she can beat Valentina Shevchenko again and silence all the doubters, if she does that, there is literally nothing left for her to do.